Syrian government forces have taken control of military bases in the northeast of the country, bases abandoned days ago by the United States. That's according to Russian state media. The Russian-backed Syrian army advanced into the area under a deal struck with the Kurdish fighters who've just lost their powerful American backers. So that's one of the two sides pushing forward. The other is backed by Turkey, whose president said in just the past few hours he has no intention of declaring a ceasefire as Washington is demanding. Recep Tayyip Erdogan had this defiant message for his NATO allies. Our country has fulfilled the rules of being in alliance with many different allies, but we realize that our allies give us promises. They say one thing to us, and do other stuff behind our back. It is clear now that despite everything, Turkey supports peace, stability and the well-being of people, and it will always be that way. Well, we can show you live pictures from the Turkey-Syria border uh, fighting uh, taking place in several areas. Also on the border is our correspondent Barbara Plett-Usher, and Barbara seeing movement from both sides. Yes, yes, uh, the, uh, the fighting has continued. This is the most active um, uh, front line on the border at the moment, this town of Ras Al Ain, which you can see uh, behind me, the smoke billowing into the air. This is from artillery fire from the Turkish forces who are uh, shelling the Syrian Kurdish town. And the Kurds um, have regrouped, actually, and or reorganized and have been managed to keep them um, from taking the town so far. So this is an example of what Mr. Erdogan uh, was talking about in Parliament, which was a very firm, um, very, very sort of strong stand with his position. He said, we are not going to negotiate with the Kurds. There may be foreign powers who want to mediate, uh, but we will not sit down and speak to terrorists. The only way that our military operation will end is if they lay down their arms and retreat out of the area that we want to create uh, as a safe zone. And by foreign mediators, uh, I think he was referring to the U.S. because the Americans have called for a ceasefire. They are sending the vice president and the secretary of state here to try to convince Mr. Erdogan uh, to end the military operation. And he is, in essence, giving them a strong message that he's not really in the mood to, uh, to, to hear what they have to say. Yeah, extraordinary developments, Barbara, with uh, President Erdogan saying, I'm not prepared to meet the vice president. We've just heard uh, Michael Pence is saying, well, I'll go to Ankara anyway, in the hope of meeting him. Uh, but it could be said, I suppose, that the US has relinquished its influence here. Well, it certainly has reduced its leverage by pulling out U.S. troops from northeastern Syria, troops that were working together with the Kurds. Now that there is uh, no military presence on the ground, or at least a military presence that is exiting as we speak, uh, the Americans do have less leverage in terms of trying to influence the Turks. But also, the Turks and Mr. Erdogan are quite angry with the U.S. Um, he, Mr. Erdogan thought that he had explained to President Trump why he needed to do this. Mr. Trump had said, look, it will create problems, but we're not going to get in the way. We're going to pull our troops out. And so he thought he had uh, some sort of agreement. And since then, Mr. Trump has uh, has actually uh, come out much more strongly. There was a real backlash in Washington, fierce anger from Congress, from the, uh, from the, the military, from the foreign policy establishment, saying that Mr. Trump had sold out uh, America's Kurdish allies. And so since then, uh, the president has taken quite a tough line, threatening sanctions and so on. Uh, and Mr. Erdogan has said, look, we were just going to evaluate the situation when Mr. Pence and Mr. Pompeo come. Um, they have been uh, calling for negotiations. They have been you know, talking badly about me personally. They have been, uh, you know, Congress has been saying all kinds of things. I want to find out what really the situation is. And he did say, well, I won't meet with the Mr. Pence and Mr. Pompeo. They'll meet with their counterparts. I'll meet with President Trump when he comes. And it's not entirely clear to me, Philip, whether that's a sort of protocol thing and whether that might change over the next 24 hours. It's a bit confused. Uh, but what I can say is that he does seem to be quite angry with the Americans at this point and, and in no, uh, no mood for compromise. Yeah, a sense of volatility and quite a lot of emotion there. Barbara, thank you.